we're in my car today, and it's having an issue that it's been having for the last year. So the issue that I've been having is I've been hearing like a very high revving sound whenever I'm increasing speed. Now originally I thought it was something wrong with my engine or transmission, but thankfully um, it's just my wheel bearing. So now uh, I'm driving a Chevrolet Cobalt and it being a newer car, and they, they don't actually have just the bearing anymore. So you have to buy the whole hub assembly with the ABS brakes in it and everything like that. Which theoretically is actually, they do that because it's easier to switch out. It, it is easier. Um, from the research I've done, um, it is it does seem to be easier. But that being said, it is a lot more expensive. Um, depending on, you have to calculate labor, of course, for the um, normal wheel bearing. Right. But with the hub assembly, basically, Basically, I took it to the dealership and it was going to be about $1,200 to replace both of them. So both of them were completely shot. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear it now, but it's pretty, bad. it's pretty bad. It's not nearly as bad as it was before because again, both of them had the issue and I swapped out one. So the reason why we're making this video to begin with is because I'm trying to sell my car and obviously I can't sell it with a noticeable problem like that. That being said, um, I want to fix it, but I don't want to put a lot of money into it. And if I were to spend twelve hundred dollars on uh, replacing both wheel You're bearings for the dealership, no. I, my car's only worth five grand, so it's, it's just not worth it. So I went to Lord Co. and I picked up the hub assembly from them, and that was uh, about two hundred dollars. So the dealership would have charged me four hundred. I got it for two hundred at Lord Co., which isn't too bad, but again, it's still quite a bit considering uh, that I have to do both of them. So it is a lot cheaper than bringing it to the dealership, but I figured, okay, well, you know what? I need to find something. I need to go find a cheaper part. Mm -hmm. So after doing a whole bunch of research, I went on to eBay, went on to Amazon, and started looking all around, uh, looking at the model of my car, trying to find one. And the cheapest one I found is actually from a place called, um, it's an Amazon store called Prime Choice. And Prime Choice had it for, uh, you could buy two of them for $90. So I got right. one for 50 because um, I, I put the one from Lord Co. into the other side already to my left side, but now I just have to replace the one on my right side. Mm -hmm. So I didn't need two, so I just bought one. Now, obviously, ideally, you, rep um, you replace things in pairs, so it's the same part. But again, I'm, this isn't a performance car. Uh, this is just my daily commuter, and I'm looking at selling it. So anyways, uh, basically what the goal is for today is to see how cheap we can repair this wheel bearing issue. All right guys, so as you can see, we're outside of my car here and in front of me, we have the, from the left side, my old wheel bearing hub um, assembly with the, with the ABS there. And basically today, the, um, the star of the show is gonna be this guy. So it's the Prime Choice from Amazon, $50 wheel bearing hub. Um, it is a quarter of the price of the one I got from Lord Co. for the other side. So we're, I'm excited to see how this goes and hopefully it's not too much of a pain to get this thing off. So let's give it a shot. So because this axle nut is quite large, you need a large socket. In my case, it's 30 millimeter or I have an inch and a quarter that will work. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a ratchet that actually fits onto this, so I had to get a little bit creative. So I'm having to use a torque wrench, but now this is a little bit bigger than your normal standard one. Uh, as you can see, the one I actually use on my car is right here, but of course the, um, the head of this is not big enough. So I had to step it up a bit, and unfortunately, I'm stuck using this, but it works and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. There you go, so now we got some nice movement in there. Now this gets a little bit interesting. The videos that I've seen say that you just need to tap it with a hammer. So let's see what it takes. It's not budging. 
So we may have to step it up a notch here. So, we had to give up on the hammer. That wasn't strong enough, so we're gonna have to pick it up a notch. That's where this comes in. Let's see how this goes. Just that easily, it just pops out. Oh God. So if anybody out there is a big fan of our show and looking for a partially used wheel bearing, uh, I mean, it's in relatively good shape. That's OEM straight from the manufacturer. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh yeah, that's nasty. Now it's time to throw in our cheap $50 replacement. And look at that beauty. prevent having to actually put this on the ground, put the wheel on, take a screwdriver, just stick it in there, and then when you're tightening this, it's pushing against your caliper instead of your axle. I mean, it would just be a lot easier to put your car down, like you're doing that anyways. Well, no, because like I don't have, uh, I'd have to put the spare on and then punch the cap out, because they're metal, right? You just take the cap out right now, though. And then put the wheel. Well, on. this thing wouldn't fit. Oh, I see. Oh, it's too big. Yeah. Okay. So, like, there's no way that would fit through there. Right, yeah. Oh, get snug. Moment of truth. I, don't know, I've never I think that, that was it. Well, it's just this is like the lowest setting, so it doesn't make much noise. Yeah. All right. Let's put the wheel back on, and we're done. Just like that, that easy. All right, so now the wheel's back on, everything should be put back together. We don't have any leftover bolts, which is always a good sign. So let's go take this thing for a test drive. All right, let's bring it up to 30 kilometers an hour here. Do you hear that? Peace and quiet, that's what I hear. That's incredible. Like, this is what it's actually like to have a quiet car. <laughs> this is what happens <laughs> if you do the repairs right away and <laughs> you don't get used to the sound. Like, that's quiet. Holy crap. That's a good, that's a work, car in working condition, Grayson. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. So incredible. Like, 
Your engine has a good exhaust note. You can actually hear it now. Not bad. And then I can brake. Yeah, it doesn't pull anything. It doesn't pull either side at all. That's how you do it, folks. Fifty dollars and a jackhammer and a jackhammer, and you got yourself a working replacement rotor yeah. or wheel bearing hub and a torque wrench for, made for bridges and a torque wrench made for bridges, and you have once again a quiet car. All right. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this quick video. Uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and um, we have some exciting stuff coming out throughout the next couple days. Um, if you want to check out uh, Prime Choices Amazon store, the links in the description. So go and check them out. Um, again, if you have a performance car or a high-end car by any means, like I would suggest going and getting the proper OEM parts, spending the money. Um, but in terms of daily commuter cars like mine, um, you know what? So far, I'm impressed. Um, I would not, I could not tell you the difference between one side or the other. Exactly. Uh, it, it feels identical to the $200 one that I bought, and the $200 one's the identical to, uh, to the $400 one they sell you at the. Oh yeah, no. Dealership. Don't so. go to the dealership. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again for watching. Take it easy.